for me, that's one of the most important insights in executive compensation, that the high pay that we all observe is not necessarily based because it's measured in the wrong way. It may be just the reason of pay transparency. When we uh, did that research, of course, we could make more analysis. And what, we, uh, what I did, actually, I made a control group where we didn't give any benchmarking information, where we told them they should just make a proposal. Uh, even then it increased a little bit. In a public audience, typically when I do this in a, in a classroom like here, it's actually a little bit less because people behave, they think they have to behave very responsible. Today we're trying to make it more real. It's, it's the first time I'm trying to actually have a CEO and make it real so that he can actually answer you know, what a CEO would think. So you had a much more representative uh, result here. And the interesting thing, it also works with babysitters and cleaning stuff. So in the same form, I also asked, you know, not about the CEO, I asked about a babysitter or a cleaning stuff, and they would also get wage increases if salary would be transparent. So that's actually a good social, a good social measure. If you want to make sure people earn more money, make wages transparent. It might actually work better than a minimum wage. When you say like, okay, every babysitter has to publish their salaries, and then it's public know-how, and whenever you hire a babysitter, you're going to feel very uncomfortable if you pay less than the median. Because you want your baby to be cared for, and you know, we don't want to pay less. And the cleaning lady, or person, um, to be more correct, uh, would also probably get a higher wage because you want that person not to think that you're taking advantage of them. So pay transparency is probably the reason why we have rising CEO levels. And it may also work for blue collar, for any kind of staff work, if we had a lot more transparency there. We also asked about math, math grades to see if it has to do something with intelligence. And what people answered, there are a couple of cynics, you know, who said, like, I have a math grade of two, which is not really possible if you are a student, you know, so I think these 30, and they have had the highest increase. So maybe, you know, they're cynical, so I'm, I'm not so worried about these guys, but if you look here at the, at the, at the grades they, they, they reported on math, there's no correlation between uh, the wage increase they did on average and uh, the math degree, and the math grade they got. Interesting is that women are less affected. They're less affected by this anchor effect. So they're, they, they, they remain more conservative. So if you have more women on boards, it may actually lead to less spiraling executive pay. It's a very interesting uh, effect that was observable. Uh, finally, uh, there was a really interesting uh, uh, information. If we look at um, the percentile ranks, you know, I showed you the result overall. So at, at the 10th percentile rank, it increased the most. So people that make less money will actually see the highest increase in salaries. And that, by the way, is something we observed in Switzerland after the Minder Law, when uh, there was a, a public voting on more pay transparency in Switzerland. What happened was that CEOs that were on the lowest decile had the highest wage increase. And we could actually see that people on the top level, on the, on the 90th percentile rank, came down. So this is something we observed over the last 10 years, that we do not have these extreme highs anymore with CEOs, but we have an ever-increasing average. So that's because it's more transparent now, we, it moves a lot faster upwards. Music